Well, our, our friend Shadowburn was running a live stream and featuring the Schumann resonance being off. <clears throat> Interesting thread it was there. I tried to contribute what I could. Excuse me, sorry about that. The, uh, but the Schumann resonance is actually what it says. It's a resonance. It's a vibration. And the sun and the earth were in sync, and it was probably because of the sun. Well, the sun makes a noise. It's actually, in the low frequency range, sounds like a buzzing of a bee. When you have collapse being opposed by expansion, the sun itself sets up a harmonic frequency. We tried to see what was causing uh, this rapid shift. Uh, the extreme ultraviolet was extreme as ever. Uh, and that's been usual. The earthquakes did kick up a notch. Look at the entire Great Basin surrounded by earthquakes. Southern California. Blue were, was taken yesterday. Blue was the last 24 hours. So it was overlapping this Schumann disturbance. Globally, we look at the mid-atlantic ridge has shifted this week the northern part and we see that globally we saw a, a rash of earthquakes kick up small earthquakes but they all happened at the same time and they all looked uh to be along tectonic zones but don't don't mistake the volcanic zones for being dormant Tierra de Fuego in Guatemala erupted. It, this is probably one of the worst eruptions in Guatemala recent history. There were several small towns around Tierra de Fuego. One of those was a cultural, historic archaeology site uh, called Antigua. And Antigua was a really cool place to visit there. But And Tierra de Fuego had been erupting. Uh, when I was down there when I was 19, they considered it dormant, hardy, hardy har. And they had significant pyroclastic flow. And we've seen this pattern globally now. The frequency of these eruptions that are going on, especially the gray eruptions, they're settling down in terms of numbers. But when they do erupt, they seem to be bigger and more explosive. And that pattern has been played out at several volcanoes around the Earth. So that's uh, something to look at. We looked at the magnetosphere and saw that the blue component, the sun's component, had shifted 50 nanoteslas higher. Remember, it was running... A and opposing or either mirroring or opposing the BY complex or the BY component. The BY component is still about where it's been. And it, there is a shift where they're not quite opposed yet. But we see turbulence in the BX component, that's the Earth sun component and it doesn't seem to be really responding to what the BY component is doing. We do see some turbulence and jaggedness so we see a change and it's rather quick change in the in the BX co component. Something gravitationally and magnetically interrupted that and it, it was kind of sudden we look at the magnetosphere and there's no particles no, at least no energy no energy here no energy there we do have compressions there look at that compression that can set off your seismicity and but yet we don't see geomagnetic storms so that that's screaming neutral helium it really is and when we look for the electrons, they're almost gone. I mean, there's, we, we're so used to seeing electrons pulsing and streaming. 
into into the magnetosphere now it's crazy to see it that sparse we look at the white light because I want to see what the Sun's doing and we see a ton of white light anomalies hap happening last week about the turn of the month and we see in the corona and and the outer corona we see a shifting of the glow now the top and the bottom of the Sun put out corona holes and sometimes they create a void in the particle streams and the electron streams and so the, you will see a holes in that outer corona but my again what's lighting up the rest of the corona and look at those lines the boundary lines they're crossing each other and we'll come back to it we go down to the south pole we see again shifting lines we see pulsating light but there's those lines again up on top those are uh, triangular shaped almost um, those light anomalies I cannot explain but we're gonna try to look at what they could be there's also a blurred disk around this uh, Mauna Loa does that they put a blurred disk around and it kind of makes everything fuzzy it covers almost half of this disk that little blurred spot and it does show up as an inner halo so that that kind of can add to some of the anomalies but you know this brown dwarf in this picture is up to the upper right that's where it would be so all of a sudden we see an anomaly in that direction creating waves and waves of visible light now what would create waves of visible light well if there was a magnetic field uh, coming from outside from the upper right it could be electrons streaming through a matrix of helium thereby creating lines lighting up some areas while providing dark lines in other areas but that light anomaly is is unexplainable and then we go a couple days later and then we get this light anomaly and and it almost looks like it's looping when it's when it claims not to be looping because um, we see some of the same images repeating 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 um, and for something that's supposedly streaming uh, that's just a little suspicious we speed it up and we slow it down to see if we get a rotation like counterclockwise rotation and I get a feel of, of of waves of particles coming from right to left so that's that's the feel I get and the reason you are seeing white light is because of all the electrons and the high density cosmic rays what happens when you run electrons through plasma um, or hot helium you create light so so but the we see these matrices these lines straight lines in a curved universe is kind of bizarre but um, that's extreme ultraviolet associated with helium two different sources of light coming in two different directions and orientations will create will create patterns this is a sound wave um, demonstration it helps you visualize uh, what happens the, there's harmonic sound vibrating back and forth across this plate and it forms symmetric and concentric patterns So when waves bounce back and forth, they interact with one another. So it's like two different sources of waves. And the higher the frequency, the less P 
pitch change causes greater changes in your visual field. Just minute changes will vastly change the, the array and the pattern. But here's a pattern. Um, you know, they're, it's not symmetric, but it is kind of resembles other patterns that we see regarding the corona of the sun in different wavelengths. When you have two different waves passing through one another, you create uh, high points and low points. And those high points show up brighter on the imagery. Now here's one where the water actually is coming back and forth on itself. This is actually hooked up to a band and they're doing water experiments with sound. But here's some of the water patterns and does it look familiar to you? So there is resonance going on some of its electrical, some of its mechanical and tidal forces. But what we do know happened right as the Schumann resonance went berserk, this happened. And this is a transit of Venus, and we think Venus is closest to Earth than it's ever been. We think Venus has been pulled out of its orbit. And Literally, this transit just took such a short period of time. It's a very quick transit happening over the course of a day.